Greetings in the name of Christ. Welcome to worship on this Mother's Day. Allow these words from Psalm 139 to focus our hearts on the Lord today. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Let us praise God in celebration as we sing together Faith of Our Mothers. Today's scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 6, 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into the occupy so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all this decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, our, O Israel, and the, observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flow, flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are always, when you lie down and you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate. Our scripture this morning tells parents to teach their children, especially to teach them to love God with all their might. Helping with homework is hard for parents sometimes. We tell them our teacher told us to do it differently, or we simply just don't want to listen to them. Sometimes we don't want to listen to what they have to say about other things too, like getting along with others and the importance of cleaning up after ourselves, or advice about making good choices. Proverbs 29.15 reads, 
The rod and reproof gave wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When we take mom's advice or learn from what she teaches us, it makes her so proud and brings her so much joy. But when we refuse to listen or accept what she teaches us, we bring shame and break her heart. In our scripture this morning, God tells parents to keep his commands and teach them to their children so that we all may enjoy long life. Life is much more enjoyable when we listen to, learn from, and obey our parents. That's the way families work because it is also the way it works as God's children. Life is just better when we love God, learn his word, and apply it to our lives. So this week, listen to your mom more and try not to argue with her, but just doing what she tells you to do. See if life is more enjoyable for you and for her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of our families. We thank you for our moms and grandmas today we, and all the women who influence us and teach us your word. We ask for forgiveness for the times we've been disobedient or refuse to listen to them. Teach us to honor our mothers as they honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Today we end our series on hope for the future with a message on the future of the family. Regarding marriage, the American Psychological Association website reads, healthy marriages are good for couples' mental and physical health. They are also good for children. Growing up in a happy home protects children from mental, physical, educational, and social problems. However, about 40 to 50 percent of married couples in the United States divorce. The divorce rate for subsequent marriages is even higher. Divorce rates actually peaked in the 1980s and have been in decline ever since. However, so have marriage rates. Today, the nuclear family is far more fluid than ever before. But there is hope for the future of the family. Let us pray and prepare our hearts to receive God's word today. Holy God, we give you thanks for our families in which you have placed us. Every family has struggles, sins, and brokenness. But we know that you desire to heal that brokenness and guide us in healthy relationships with one another. We know that you have a good plan for our families. Quiet our minds and open our hearts to receive your word today and give us courage to act in obedience to your word as we love you and love our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I heard Adrian Rogers preach on this message, on this passage from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And in his sermon, he says there are three things this passage teaches us. A future for the family is promised, a foundation for the family is provided, and a formula for the family is prescribed. I want to walk us through the hope found in this promise, provision, and prescription, but first, a little contextual background, background information. Moses has just gathered the people and given them the Ten Commandments from God and has explained to them the heart of God in giving these commandments. At the end of chapter 5, in verse 29, Moses quotes God's words to him regarding the people. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always so that it, may, it might go well with them and their children forever. Like a good parent, God's commands are meant for the good of the people. In giving these commands, God is providing boundaries that, we, that will lead them to their best life. God's commands were never intended to be restrictive for the sake of restriction or power, but to be life-giving and enhance the total package of the human experience. In John 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Sin steals our joy and destroys relationships. So God gave us these commands in order to draw us away from sin and into God's sanctifying grace. 
Then Moses says to the people, these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. God's promise is to be in relationship with each generation of faithful families so that they may enjoy long life. The hope for the future of your family begins with you and your generation of family right now. The Israelites have displayed their share of disobedience and have suffered through the consequences. God says to them, it doesn't have to be this way. I will give you peace about your children and grandchildren's future. All you have to do is accept this foundation that there is one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the foundation of the family. Love for God fills us with God's love for one another. As we accept God's forgiveness for our sins, we learn to forgive one another. As God is compassionate and patient towards us, we grow in compassion and patience toward one another. No matter how old you are, how old your kids are, or what your family makeup looks like right now, it's never too late nor too early to build your family on this foundation. It starts with you placing yourself on this foundation of faith and then teaching your kids and grandkids by example and by words. Did you know that Karl Marx, the philosopher whose work is remembered for inspiring communist governments, was raised in a Jewish family? Adrian Rogers says that when the Marx family moved, his dad decided they would now attend a Lutheran church. When Carl asked why, his dad said it would be better for business networking, and that is when Carl rejected the faith of his father and turned to philosophy. Carl's dad lacked a sincere faith and a connection with the love of God and was therefore unable to lead his son to faith. So the world influenced and shaped Carl instead. Whether your family includes children or grandchildren or no children, a spouse or significant other, siblings or cousins or nieces and nephews, taking our families to church is not enough. Our faith must be evident in our lives. Our love for God must be the foundation of our lives and our interactions at home in order to lead our families in, to Christ's saving grace. Moses said, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Those of us who have been struggling to homeschool children lately are thinking, oh, great, something else I'm probably going to fail at teaching my kids. Don't go there, friends. There is a formula for teaching faith to our families, and with God's help, it will work. Now, others of you may be saying, oh, really? Then why is it that my grown children have turned their backs on the Lord? Where did I go wrong? Don't go there either. Feelings of failure when you have done your best are from the enemy. It's not your fault. I don't know why two children can grow up in the same God-fearing home and go in two different directions with faith. But I do know that Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when they are old, they will not turn from it. Like the prodigal son, there is hope that your children will return to the foundation you started them on. Pray for them and continue to teach and model for them your faith. Here's how. Starting at verse 7, impress these commandments on your children the Hebrew here says to teach them diligently to your children. So first and foremost, be intentional and actively teach your children about God and the commandments of God. This doesn't mean that you have to put together a lesson plan for each day, complete with lectures, crafts, and story times, and so forth. Moses says to let this teaching flood your everyday activity and conversation 
when you're at home and when you are out in the community, in your bedtime routine and your morning routine. Let teaching the commandments of God be as natural as pouring a bowl of cereal or instructing your child to clean their room or brush their teeth. Find ways every day to apply the word of God to your life and to theirs. When your son or daughter calls you up to complain about a tough day at work, take them to scripture. Listen to the Holy Spirit for that scripture that is just right for the moment. If you're studying scripture every day, this will come easily and probably from something you studied that morning or the day before. It's awesome how God provides and prepares us for these moments when we are faithfully in his word. Verses eight and nine read, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your homes and on your gates. The Israelites took this literally, at least in the later years. Orthodox Jews still wear leather boxes and straps on their arms and on their heads during their morning prayers. There are also scripture boxes for the home. These boxes contain scrolls with verses from the Torah. I think the spirit of these verses, though, is to demonstrate for our families and teach them how scripture informs the work of our hands and the thoughts in our heads and to create an atmosphere of faith in our homes. It never hurts to have some scripture art on the walls and on our clothes and things either. As we fill our homes and our lives with God's word, we also fill our hearts and our minds with God's word. I've heard it said that faith is often caught more than it is taught. And Francis of Assisi is accredited for having said, preach the gospel at all times when necessary, use words. Let your home and your life preach the gospel to your children so that your faith will be taught and caught by the consistency of your actions and your words together. At the end of Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses instructs the people, In the future, when your son asks you, What is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, We were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out from there to bring us in and give us the land he promised on oath to our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive, as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God as he commanded us, that will be our righteousness. Now, I doubt that particular story is going to have the same impact on you and your children and grandchildren as it had in those generations immediately following these events. The idea here is repeated in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Know your story of faith and be ready to share it with your children. Let them be witnesses to the difference that Christ has made in your life so that they will give glory to God and desire the same hope for themselves and for their families. Hope for the future of the family begins with you standing firm on the foundation of Christ. As we prepare as we pray together today, I want as we pray together today, I want to read this Mother's Day prayer from worldinprayer.org. Let us pray. Holy One, we gather in your presence to give you thanks and to celebrate the gift of your love, a love that supports, nurtures and challenges us in ways that strengthen and transform us. We offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing presence in our lives and all the blessings that you so generously offer us. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we give thanks for mothers the world over. We give thanks for all those who have nurtured and care for us. 
remembering especially birth mothers, adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, aunts, grandmothers, teachers, neighbors, and all women who have shared their faith with us. We pray compassionate God for those mothers who have been hurt, disillusioned, or disappointed in their role as mother. We pray for those who have been denied a longed-for chance at motherhood and for those whose years of mothering have been cut short by the loss of a child. We lift up before you, O oh God, the members of our human family around the world. For those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those who need healing, for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities, for those who are grieving, and for those whose needs are known to you alone. Holy Mother and Father of us all, touch us with your healing peace and gentle embrace that we may walk in your ways, bringing dignity, justice, and peace to all corners of your world. All of this we pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Our virtual Bible study is on session four out of six this week. You are invited to join us anytime. The previous sessions are not required for participation. The links to the video and discussion are uh, in the description below and on our Facebook pages. You are invited to send your tithes and offerings in care of Diana at Mount Zion or Holly at Buckland. Our closing hymn is number 445, in the United Methodist hymnal, happy the home where God is there. Receive these words as your benediction. Go forth in peace to honor your mothers and honor God as you impress God's commands on younger generations. Amen. <laughs>